Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Jackie Seifman, and I am the program manager for Baby's First Test. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. Um, this is our first public introduction of the Newborn Screening Public Square. First, just to go through some of the agenda items that we'll be covering today. First, I'll just cover who we are for those that may be less familiar with the Newborn Screening Clearinghouse. And then I'll do a quick introduction to the public square. And then we'll have speakers talking about how to get involved in more details on the public square. And then finally, we'll do a visual walkthrough and time for Q&A. So just a few webinar logistics. Um, before we jump into today's presentation, I just want to point out a few things. Please ask questions using the question box on the right-hand side of your screen in the control panel at any time during the presentation. We will be collecting the questions during the presentation and asking them during the second half. Um, the webinar is also being recorded, and a link will be available on the Public Square as well as Baby's First Test YouTube channel within 48 hours. And of course, if you need any IT or technical assistance, we do have someone from Baby's First Test using the chat box, so please communicate that. So first, we'll go through who we are. Um, my name is Jackie Seisman, and I am the program manager for Baby's First Test. Um, some of you may be more familiar with the Newborn Screening Clearinghouse, and I've seen these slides before. Um, but for those that haven't, I'll go through just a little bit of a background. So the Newborn Screening Clearinghouse was created in response to the Newborn Screening Save Lives Act of 2008, which called for creating a central online clearinghouse. Um, this act was reauthorized in 2014. We are a one-stop shop for newborn screening information and education for new and expecting families, health professionals, policymakers, industry, and the public. So we have a wide, wide audience um, at both the local, state, and national levels. But a key piece of really what we do is engagement and making sure we really are meeting people where they are in the process. And babiesfirsttest.org houses this clearinghouse. And through, um, and this is our main web platform, we make sure that parents, healthcare professionals, the public have the right information at the right time and empowering them throughout the newborn screening experience. And we do this in multiple ways, through training videos and webinars, continuing education opportunities, educational resources, details on all the state programs, including what states screen for, their policies and procedures, as well as information on all 77 newborn screening conditions. And it not only has detailed condition information, but it also includes support services, family experiences, and more. And of course, we also have our mobile app, which is very popular among health professionals. We have it for iOS devices at this time. We are currently working on launching an Android version, which should be ready in early September. In April 2015, we relaunched our website, making sure it was having we have a more intuitive user interface and improved mobile function, but also a key piece of this relaunch um, was to make sure to integrate um, responsive web design for both our English and our Spanish sites. And this means that all of our sites are now able to adapt the layout of the content to the type of viewing device a user uses. So whether users are coming from a desktop, a smartphone, a tablet, the site will automatically display in the most user-friendly mode. And this was really key since more than 50% of our traffic is from mobile devices. And with recent months, this is trending more toward 60%. Of course, our website is just one of the platforms and one part of Baby's First Test. We also have our key programs, such as the Consumer Task Force and the Challenge Awards. So just to give you a broad overview of you know, how far we've come since we've originally launched in 2011, um, since 2012, Baby's First Test has trained 37 consumer task force members across 18 states. On our site, we have over 100,000 content pages, including information on all the 77 newborn screening conditions, as I mentioned earlier. 
We also have over 1.5 million visitors um, since 2011 with over 1.7 million sessions and over 3 million page views. And since that time, we've also had a 100% increase in visits. Um, this year alone brought nearly um, close to 800,000 visits from more than 615,000 users. This currently averages around 60,000 sessions per month, and we are, it's growing by the month, um, and we've been adding more than 1 million sessions on Baby's First Test since our first original launch in 2011. So really, who's visiting Baby's First Test? Um, as you can see on this chart, this is from a user survey that we conducted from October 2015 to February 2016. And the user satisfaction survey was really meant to better understand who was coming to this site, what are they looking for, what are their needs, and making sure that Baby's First Test was really meeting those needs. While we have a lot more data from this, this gives you a small snapshot of who's really coming to our site. We had over 700 users fill out the survey. Um, those that filled out the survey, 47% identified as a healthcare professional. Now, of course, the healthcare professional, there's more detail to this in terms of some were nurses, some were genetic counselors, pediatricians, specialists, um, as well as lab personnel. And then, of course, 46% identified as family members of a newborn. And as you can see, about 19% said they were a parent with a new baby on the way, and 18% was a parent with a new baby. Um, and that 7% are those who identified as an advocate. So now we're going to move on to, now they have a slight introduction to Baby's First Test. And of course, if you have any questions about the clearinghouse at the end of the call, please feel free to type those in the chat box, and we can address them at the end. I am now going to introduce the newborn screening um, public square, which we're really excited to present. Um, discussing it today will be Dr. Aaron Goldenberg. He is the Director of Ethics, Policy, and Practice at Baby's First Test. He is also an assistant professor in the Department of Bioethics at Case Western Reserve University. In addition to that, he is the assistant director of the Center for Genetic Research, Ethics, and Law and the assistant director of the department's master's program. So he is very busy. So we're happy that he's able to join us today. We also have Natasha Benham, who is the program director of Baby's First Test, as well as the vice president of strategic development at Genetic Alliance. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Jackie, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Perfect, Aaron. Perfect. Good. So we are very excited to launch this new resource uh, from Genetic Alliance and uh, from the Clearinghouse. This is something that we've been really anticipating over the last year or so um, and just so excited to roll this out uh, over the next few weeks. Um, what, is, what is the public square? So we're all aware that newborn screening has an amazing number of stakeholders from lab directors and program officials to families who've been affected by newborn screening conditions to the public, researchers who are interested in, in uh, either research directly with uh, blood spots or specifically on newborn screening related conditions. Um, and we know that there are already a number of places where discussions around, you know, new current hot topics in newborn screening happen. There are a number of great listservs out there. There are a number of great um, engagement opportunities in person through conferences. But what we wanted to do is to create something slightly unique, slightly different, something that would bridge some boundaries across different stakeholders. Many of the resources out there are places where state officials can talk to each other or lab officials. Um, and there are some already existing places where some of that bridging is happening, and we wanted to, to really build on that kind of, uh, of a bridge between stakeholders. We wanted to really try to, try to uh, do something unique and create a unique online space for different stakeholders to talk together about issues within newborn screening, about topics related to newborn screening, with a specific focus on education, training, outreach, and engagement. And we're really, really excited. As you can see from the, from the slide here, it, this is an open space dedicated to ongoing conversations in newborn screening. Right, it's a place for sharing new ideas, for talking about new you know, issues in newborn screening. We know that not every uh, um, uh, 
topic that we will put into the into the public square will be for every stakeholder. But we really want to try to broaden the horizons in terms of engagement around is issues within newborn screening. Um, it, we think this is really important because we're at a time where newborn screening is changing very quickly. New conditions are being added. New technologies are being used. Um, and so we wanted a place where people could engage in conversations uh, in, a, in a safe and a, and a, a very open atmosphere. Um, we envision uh, a, a number of different kinds of activities that will happen in the public square. We could see, you know, discussions on, you know, families that want to, you know, kind of talk about their own personal story about engaging with newborn screening and what it meant for their families. We also see this as a place where people could talk about uh, hot topics, so new conditions that are being added or new technologies, for example, genome sequencing. We see this as a place where researchers can come together. So if a group has a new research project that they really want to do some public engagement about, the public square would be a place they could hold a webinar, talk about their research, and have a, a chance for people to respond. Uh, we see this as a place for doing training and cross-communication between programs. So there's been some requests for talking about, for example, setting, setting educational priorities for state programs and having a place where people can come on and talk about those kinds of issues. Um, so the audience is very broad, right? The audience is really anyone who engages in newborn screening, all the way from uh, uh, officials running the programs to really the general public who maybe is new to newborn screening and wants to know more. They're either pregnant or they've just had a child and want to hear more about newborn screening. So it really is meant to be a broad, uh, engaged online environment to talk about things. Um, if you go to the next slide, we can see some more details about the public square. So first of all, we want this to be open, right? We want this to be something that the community, the New World Community community can contribute to. We will probably pick the first couple topics, and uh, as things move on, we'll pick topics that we think will be interesting. But we want to hear from you. If there's a topic that your state or your organization or you personally are interested in having as a, a webinar or a, a kind of engaged discussion, we want to hear from you. We want this to be an open place. Uh, where people can 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 raise topics, can raise issues. Um, we're not thinking of this just as some text and then people respond to the text or just a webinar and people respond to the webinar. We want this to be also diverse in terms of the kinds of activities we'll have on here. We may post a new fact sheet that we want responses on uh, or, or that people would like to hear some public feedback. If a state creates a new educational video and they want to uh, have it in the community and have people being able to respond to it and ask questions, that might be something that we could do. We may have uh, um, webinars where we have a panel, a, a panel of speakers talking about a particular topic, um, like timeliness, for example, where people can come on and watch the webinar and then respond to the webinar and get answers back. We're thinking that at the beginning we'll probably have somewhere between one and two. Uh, uh, public square events each quarter. That may increase if we find this to be a really active and lively discussion that we hope it will be. Um, that number might increase. Um, after the, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more details about how this will work um, in, in the next section of the webinar today. Um, but we're hoping that each webinar, once we open, will be open somewhere between two weeks and a month. And so what that means is you can go on any time in that time period and comment, leave questions, leave comments, um, and, that, and, and that it will be open for a while so you can go back and see if have people responded to your comments, have the panelists responded to your comments. So for example, we could envision a panel that would then go back and periodically over the month check and respond to people's questions. So we think of this as a, as a, as a long-standing kind of a webinar experience. Um, Every, every public square is going to be moderated. That may be moderated um, by Baby's First Test uh, staff. And uh, um, it may also be moderated by guest moderators, people from particular states or particular research groups, organizations who want to monitor. Um, to comment, to be part of the, so anyone can go on and read the public square. If you want to comment, users will have to log in either using LinkedIn, Facebook, or a Google account. Um, and that just allows you to have an easy access to comment. Anyone can go on. You don't have to have an account in order to just see the, to see the, uh, the comments. But if you'd like to comment back, you will have to log in, and we'll talk through that in the next section. Um, comments will be public and available for everyone to view. So we want this to be a safe environment. We want this to be an open environment. But it's important that users know that 
their comments will be seen by anybody. Um, and, and, and that's just important for transparency and privacy and clarity for, for people participating in the public square. Um, we will be archiving all of the public square events. So we hope that this will build on itself. And so all the public square events will go into our resource center, which will be launched at the end of the month by August 31st. Um, and so you'll be able to go on and let's say you missed you, you weren't able to go on and see the comments related to a conversation about timeliness, for example. You'll be able to go on to the Resource Center and, and log in and see the comments. Um, and that might spark you to ask for a different, uh, you know, a different topic that we'll talk about. Um, so, you know, all, all in all, we want this to be a, a really broad and inviting and engaging experience to talk about newborn screening education, to talk about newborn screening outreach and engagement, to talk about newborn screening issues. Um, and we really think this will be a unique space to kind of further dialogue within within the newborn screening community. And when I say community, I mean I mean really everybody. We really want this to be open for for everyone to participate together and to talk to each other. And that's what really what the public square is all about. So I will hand it back over um, to Jackie. I'll be around for, to answer any questions, but I hope this gives you a little bit of information and excitement about this new about this new um, resource that uh, we're as you can tell we're very excited about it as well. Great. Thank you so much, Erin. I think that was a great overview. Next, I will actually hand it off back to Natasha. Um, Natasha is, of course, the director at Babies First Test, and she's going to be talking about ways you can participate and opportunities to partner. Great. Thank you. Uh, so one of the key pieces to the public square is this idea that we really have a place for bi-directional communication. So, so often, But, um, you know, this is going to be a really great opportunity to get a lot of different types of feedback. And to be able for us to share that with our different partners would be great. So there are a range of different ways to participate. Of course, there's kind of the baseline listening in or reading the different comments um, and posting to different comments that are put up. Um, but there are also going to be other ways. We really want this to be a shared resource. Um, for everyone in the newborn screening community. So one, you could always submit a topic, um, and there are many ways of doing that, either emailing us directly or emailing at info at Babies First Test. Um, if there's a topic that's coming up that you think would be really appropriate for this type of a discussion, um, a place for to have a lot of input from a range of different um, perspectives, you can definitely do that. Uh, you can also be able to help by being a kind of providing some content expertise. So with the different topics that will be coming up in the next several months, we may be reaching out to people to say, you know, it would be great if you could join us on this particular um, public square discussion because you have a particular expertise or a particular perspective. We also, as Erin mentioned, um, will allow other people to moderate the public square um, session. So that means, uh, you know, someone kind of organizing um, a discussion, moderating if there are different panelists, and then monitoring the dialogue that goes on in, in the comments section um, for, the, uh, for the weeks or, or months after that's posted. Um, and of course, like I said, just ge and the general joining of the discussion. This is something that we kind of are all seeing as being very exciting, but also very experimental. You know, we always, um, when we go to meetings or we see each other face to face, so often we say, you know, we really need other ways for people to be able to communicate and to um, get a range of voices into the newborn screening dialogue. And this is kind of our experiment into that to say, how do we use the available technology and the platform of Babies First Test? to be able to provide a space for a range of different um, audiences, stakeholders, and a range of different perspectives to come together on a range of different topics um, with a particular lens towards education and awareness building. 
Um, so we're really excited to see how these different opportunities to partner expand and build upon themselves. But definitely, if you have any ideas or um, are interested in participating, please definitely reach out to us. We're really excited to be able to see how this can be not just a baby's first test program, but really a program and project of the newborn screening community as a whole. Great. Thank you, Natasha. So now we're going to have the first sneak peek of the public square. Um, we'll have Jessica and Orr from Blenderbox. Um, Blenderbox is our web developer for Babies First Test and has been with us from the very beginning. They will walk you through just some sample visual designs and then we'll go straight to the Babies First Test site. So I will let them take it away. I'm going to switch over now to um, one of the sites. And uh, while Jackie's pulling that up, uh, we can introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Hor Stuhl, that's O-R-R, -R, and I'm the Director of User Experience at Thunderbox. And hi, I'm Jessica Principato. I'm the Project Manager for the Baby's First Test website. Um, and we were really excited when uh, when when Jackie and Natasha and I came to us with this idea. Um, being part of several of your steering committee um, uh, annual meetings now for for a couple of years, we've heard the same things about the need for more public discourse. Um, and so this is just exciting for us to to put uh, your team's your team's ideas into into real life. Yes, thank you so much, Dor or and Jessica for doing um, presenting this. We're really excited. Yeah. I'm ready when you are. Okay, sure. Um, so we're starting here on the home page. Uh, there'll be a couple places we want to promote this since this is such a big new um, initiative for Babies First Test. So what you see here at the top is a, a, a promotion that can will appear on every site across the, excuse me, every page across the website. Um, just helping promote that. So even for users who are not coming from the home page but coming from a Google search or something like that. See that at the top of the screen. Similarly, if you scroll down, um, you will see another promo that will be more permanent on the home page, and that will also uh, introduce the public square. Now, this is the this is the landing page for the public square. It's like the public square home, and there are a couple of things you want to keep in mind here. Um, you'll notice some of this text is, is placeholder um, because it's a design file. But right up front in this red area, we have some introduction explaining um, what the public square is all about and really setting the tone right away. Um, and this, this is a, a visual pattern that we are going to see repeated as we go into the individual topics. Further down the page, you'll see this card treatment for individual discussion topics. Um, and Aaron mentioned that we'll be archiving all of the all of the past discussions as well. The goal here is twofold. We want we want to provide a place for discourse for the whole newborn screening community, but we also want to make something that will engage users who are not quite at the level of participating in discussion, but on the site to learn. Um, and so this is part of the twofold mission here of as designers making something that will be an engaging interface for people who do want to discuss and participate, as well as something that is an attractive and respectful, um, almost like journal feeling um, design of something you'd want to read just like an article on Baby's First Test. So here on this page we're looking at two topics, uh, two examples. You'll see that the first one has a little active flag indicating that discussion is open for this. Um, and uh, you'll see a description of the issue and the number of responses and um, a link to go ahead and join the conversation. Further down um, is a, a very similar treatment for, for a past discussion. So you, a user could click on this one and read all the, all the comments and discussion that already happened. Um, as, you, as you accrue more and more topics, these are just list all in this one page so that um, the full archive is always available for the general public to read. Now here we are, uh, we're on a discussion. Um, we're going to spend a, cu a couple of minutes talking about the different, uh, the flow of the discussion and the different states of it. 
Um, so at the top, you have an introduction, uh, a little bit of background information next to the issue. And the idea here is a lot of the design decisions we've made are centered around promoting and, and establishing a, a respectful tone for conversation. Uh, we want this to be open and engaging. We want this to be open. You know, it, anyone can comment on here. Um, it, it could be policymakers, practitioners, as well as parents. Um, because of that, we want, to, we want it to be clear that although it's open to everyone, it's also respectful and, um, and cordial and thoughtful, too. Um, so at the top, we have a space for description of background on the topic. Um, these topics, could, as Aaron mentioned, could be anything from the personal to the more scientific. So we wanted to give plenty of space for background information to set that context and give a little bit of a nod for which audiences this discussion might be most appropriate for. If it's something that's more scientific, we might encourage even more response to the medical community. And then you have, again, the, the repeat of the, of the red accent, emphasizing the main question at hand. This will help focus the conversation. And underneath is Aaron with a, a photo that is not of Aaron, but of course on the site we'll have a um, Actually, when you sign in using LinkedIn or Google or Facebook, something that's nice about that method is we can pull in um, your name as well as your profile photo. And in the case of LinkedIn and some Google accounts, users will also have their um, job title and description, so in the place that they work for. This is a small touch that we thought would just add a little bit more accountability and professionalism to the discussion. So each each topic will start out with a post by the moderator. And uh, as Rakeem mentioned, uh, the moderators will be either part of the Baby's First Test team or someone working closely with it to keep track on the discussion and, um, and, and respond to users' comments to encourage more discourse and keep that back and forth going. Meanwhile, on the back end, um, more technical moderation will be available in the CMS to the Baby's First Test team. Um, so in the off chance that there are typos or um, maybe inappropriate comments, we do have that safeguard there so that the, the admin users will be able to, so basically Jackie and Natasha and their team will be able to moderate on the back end. But here, the moderator's role, in this case Aaron, is mostly to guide the discussion through further comments, through reading and responding to um, comments from the public. And last at the bottom of this page, you'll see that um, uh, just that call to action to, to join the conversation by signing in through different social media. All right, so here we see, but a little further along. So once once the discussion really gets going and you have comments coming in, we wanted to add a couple ways to make this more more um, engaging for the reader as well, or for a new commenter who's coming here for the first time. So here in this red area, you see a few new things. We have the ability to feature comments. This is something that can be done in conjunction between the moderator and Baby's First Test, the team. Um, and they have the ability to pick and choose the best quotes from the comments that they're getting. Um, this is nice for readers because it helps give a summary of what's been said so far. And it also helps further establish the respectful, um, the respectful tone of the conversation. It's another little way that the moderator can help guide the tone. Underneath, we have a call to action at the top of the conversation to share your thoughts, which would bump you down to the bottom to sign in. But in the meantime, you can see how other comments are being pulled in. And for each commenter, we have the um, uh, we have we have their image and their job title if they're using LinkedIn. This screen is the same except for the bottom. You'll see this is the comment box that, uh, that you'll see when you come to log in and go to comment yourself. Um, a few more touches here, just keeping a, a nice cordial tone, um, restating the question here, and then showing the user what your information is going to look like when you post. Um, and, um, and, and another reminder here to just keep things civil. One other little touch we've added is the ability to be invited for future discussions. So if you check that box there, 
um, you'll hear you'll get an email from Baby's First Test uh, for future future discussions. And then a thank you message. Once you've posted, um, we we thank you for your for your thoughts. And then at every turn, we're encouraging users to share as well. And last here, you can see uh, right there. If you stop, um, you'll see just some share tools right above Aaron's name. Um, users also have the ability to share individual comments. All the links will point to the same topic, so everyone will get the full discussion. But as the discussions get longer, we want to give the users the ability to pull out the comments that they like most and post them on Twitter or Facebook. And uh, one little note here, we do have the ability to flag, um, flag comments if a user decides to. And um, just another way to get a little bit of community moderation. This, this won't immediately make any change on the website, but it will send a note to the Baby's First Test team. That way they don't have to be watching it 24-7. And then a little thank you if, I, if someone does it. And that, I believe, is all of the screen. Yeah, thank you so much, Or, for going through that. Now we will go through what the actual live public square will be. And I, I think this is the, or did you want to go through this really quickly, or Jessica? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so here's the live site um, as we're finishing it up. And here you can see some of the, some actual text that we were talking about earlier. So the welcome message to the public square explaining who it's for, and that it's really for all members of the general public. Um, and uh, a, a link to get in touch if you have any questions. Of course, we'll be watching that very carefully in the beginning, as well as um, uh, that same email is for sending, suggesting topics or partnerships. Um, and then further down are some of the first uh, discussion topics that have come from Jackie and her team. Um, all the day-to-day -day management and administration content of this is, is being done by Baby's First Test. Um, so we're just helping with the design and development. Great. Thank you so much, Orr. So I wanted to note that this will be available by Monday. And so my team will send out a link to everyone that registered, um, making sure that they can add their comments to these new for the introduction to the newborn screening public square, I will post the recording link to the webinar. We are also working on a website that will have some GIFs that will explain some of the process in terms of how to really log in, how to add your comment. So if anyone has questions, you can refer to that. For our first public square, it will be officially open come Monday. But really, we want to focus on September, which September is Newborn Screening Awareness Month. And I think in the past years, we've seen many different campaigns from you know, organizations, states, providers, families, celebrating the month, helping raise awareness. Um, this is typically done through different ways, whether there's an events or social media calendars or um, campaigns. Um, in 2013, we had a very successful campaign celebrating the 50 years of newborn screening. Um, and so that's one example of a campaign. For this public square, we really wanted, you know, to have, see whether you're a parent, if you work for a state, organization, or hospital, or if you're just simply interested in newborn screening, sharing what your plans are for September, how you really define success during that month and raising awareness and really adding your ideas about how we can work together um, to maximize awareness efforts for the month. And so if you come to the Public Square page on Monday, you'll see this question of really how can we maximize efforts during Newborn Screening Awareness Month and increase awareness. You can join the discussion. So if you click here, and you'll see, um, of course, this is me logged in, but I will be able to moderate the discussion, and once we actually have posts, um, I will be the one moderating for the first September one. The public square will be open for the entire month. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. 
Now this is summarizes. I'll let Natasha, if she has any last words about what's upcoming, and then we will open it up for questions. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for everyone to being on the line. Uh, we are really excited about this. We really feel like this is a way to address um, so many of the comments and questions people have asked in terms of how do we get um, different voices and different perspectives into the newborn screening dialogue, um, how do we connect better with each other, um, and we're really seeing this as one of many options out there to be able to do this. Uh, so we invite you along. Uh, on this kind of experiment, like I said, to see what's next and how we are able to um, how we're able to move forward. So just to let people know, uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the question or chat box, um, and uh, we can uh, go through them. There aren't any currently, but um, if you have any, please put them there. Yeah, we're happy to stay on the line for a few minutes. And now that we've introduced the public square, perhaps put in the chat box any ideas that you have um, after seeing this, any ideas that would fit with your organization or state, or if you know have any questions about the September public square. I know one comment that has come up before is that people are hoping that this could be a good place to maybe discuss emerging topics that come up during the advisory committee, um, the Secretary's advisory committee on heritable disorders in newborns and children. Um, you know, we're really open to kind of any and all opportunities. Um, it looks like we have a couple questions that just came in. So I have a question about the physical length of a discussion getting very long, does the system keep track of comments you have viewed and then jump to the point of discussions when you return? Um, I, I can speak to that if you like. Yeah, that'd be great, Or. Yeah, that, that's a great question and, of course, a problem that we really hope we'll have. Um, it's something we thought about and while there's no, there's no technical way for a website to, to remember where you were if you're coming back, um, one of the things we did do in those featured comments is if you click on one of those, it actually scrolls you down to that comment, which is one way that you can kind of jump through or that a moderator can demarcate different segments of the conversation. Great. Thank you, Laura. We also have a question about is there a brief, almost text-only way of quickly viewing or scanning comments? As or showed earlier in kind of the design, the moderator and the Babies First Test team um, in that orange box were able to really select featured responses. Um, so responses that really capture the essence of the conversations that's happening. So that's one way of doing it. I will say, as Erin pointed out earlier, this will be linked to the resource center that we're launching later this month. And we hope that at the end of every public square, we'll have a summary document, which we will then post in the public square. Um, even if the comments are closed, you can view all the comments. Um, you'll be also be able to see that link that will link to where it is in the resource center um, that will really summarize you know, whether we're working on a document together and it's that final document or whether it's just this is what people said about Newborn Screening Awareness Month and all the efforts and really how can we maximize it and you know, have that joint effort together so there's not all of these separate entities really raising awareness to make it really a stronger month each year. Um, so that is one way of doing it. We do have a question about can we search comments by poster? So whoever posts the comment, will you be able to search? Or can you speak to that, if that's a possibility, perhaps in the future? Sure, yeah, it, it certainly could be in the future. I think we have a lot of ideas like that that, that we'd love to implement someday. Um, typically, you know, it's best to, to, we want to launch, and especially with something like uh, that involves your, your users, it's best to launch and just see how the community reacts. And then that'll, like, the kind of feedback we get will help us prioritize among the many features you want to add. Great. There's another question about is there a survey function for basic polling, which I think is a great question. 
So in that description box, as we said earlier, it's very flexible. We can be posting a webinar, we can have description text, we can have you know, a fact sheet, but we can also have a link to the survey. Will the actual public square have that built into that system? Um, that maybe that's something that we can work in the future if that's something that we see really fitting in with future discussions. But I will say that if there's a survey or polling that we want to take of the group, um, we could do that through either posting in the moderator section or we can post it in the text at top. Well, I also have a question that says, if we work with Genetic Alliance on a public square topic, is there capability to capture more interest, probably an email, for those participating in a particular public square topic back to the square organizers? So I think what you're saying that if there's more interest for those particularly in a yes, we will be able to communicate um, to those organizing it that there's been interest. I will also say that for you can always do additional topics. So say we have a conversation about well, newborn screening awareness month outreach, and people really love that and say let's have another discussion about education outreach in general, then we are happy to open a second public square to talk about that. I will say that we will probably close the first public square, but those remaining conversations we can continue on. Right, and I, to add on to that, I think that a lot of the discussions that we will have will be spurred by other previous conversations. So, you know, the education one is a perfect example. Education covers so many different topics you know, seeing where there's more um, discussion and more interest, there could be kind of an offshoot and, you know, a separate discussion that opens up that talks about, you know, specific education for a particular target audience or with particular types of educators as an example. Um, and if that was an originally a, um, a session that was done with a partner, then we would continue to work with that partner to see how do we address those kind of next steps um, or those additional um, conversations. Um, that's what we're really hoping for. Um, that would that's kind of like the, the goal to have conversations for both projects and products, but also other conversations and more specific um, discussion topics. Great. Just add, this is Aaron. This is Aaron. I would just add that. <clears throat> Uh, I think our hope is also that if there's a lot of excitement around particular topics that maybe we would um, work with another, you know, an organization or a state um, or a group of states to um, sponsor in some ways a topic series that we would do throughout the year. So if there's a lot of interest in having, let's say, um, prioritization uh, and specialization in educational areas around new particular areas of newborn screening, maybe we would have a series and we would host a topic every quarter around that topic. And so, you know, while, while at the beginning we're going to have one topic open at a time, we do have the capabilities to have a number of topics open. And so it may be that we have a series of topics around educational prioritization and we do that once a quarter and we keep it open for a month um, and work with a particular organization to let's say sponsor that series. So we have a lot of capabilities to really tailor the public square in a way that reaches the broad audience, but, but also meets particular interest areas for, for, uh, um, for, for groups. So we're really excited about that capability as well. Great. Thank you, Aaron. We also received a question about maybe possibly some ways programs can help get the word out about this, which I love that question. <laughs> so I think as the month goes on, we'll definitely be having opportunities for social media outreach. Of course, each public square has its own link. So as we're promoting a particular public square, um, and of course, depending on the audience for that public square, it may do different promotional means, but I would say, happy to put that on other people's websites, social media. I know that um, we may be working with organizations to push it out. We also have some promotional materials that Babies First Test is working on that will be you know, sent around to different newborn screening programs, and we're happy to send out more. Um, Natasha, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, so you know, I think you know, everything that you said um, makes perfect sense. And 
and we will definitely be looking for different ways to disseminate the information and also just raise awareness about the public square. Um, we know that you know each state is different and uh, communication styles and communication channels in different states are also different. So if you, um, if someone says, you know, I'd really love to share this with other people in my state and the way that we usually get information around is X, um, you know, please let us know and we're happy to provide that, whether that's specific types of text or comments that you would then be able to send in an email to your colleagues. Um, if it's something that's more like a flyer or um, some other suggestions, uh, you know, I think as we're starting out, if there are big groups and, you know, the best way to do it would be something that's more along the lines of a demo, um, you know, we really just want to hear from you what works best um, to get information across uh, through your organizations or through your agency um, or through your program. So we're really open to, um, to doing whatever it takes to get this information out there. Absolutely. Thank you, Natasha. I received a similar question about promotion. Um, and I, as Natasha said, I think as this rolls out, we'll be thinking more and more ways to really push this out, um, particularly among the public. We want to make sure that this isn't just promoted to the same people who would be using it, so the newborn screening community, really pushing it out to those that may be interested but don't know how to voice their opinion. Um, or just interested in newborn screening in general. So we will be working on that and we'll keep you updated. Yeah, and I think one particular potential channel um, that could be really helpful is if um, people are able to, I guess, programs are able to share this with their newborn screening advisory committees. Um, I can see that being a really interesting way of engaging people who you know, newborn screening isn't necessarily their everyday job, but they are involved and interested and, um, and you know, have, have to either make decisions or have discussions about newborn screening. I could see that being a really cool um, entry point um, that is, you know, people who are, like I said, involved but not necessarily go to all the meetings and, and see things from a national perspective. They're more working on the state level and are there to bring more of that public perspective into the dialogue of, of newborn training processes and, and how newborn training evolves. I think that could be a really great um, avenue. Great. Thank you, Natasha. I haven't received any more questions. But if you do have any questions, my email is below. Feel free to ask after. Of course, we also have, once the public square is officially up on the website, we will have a section that's called Introduction to the Newborn Screening Public Square. The link to the webinar will be found there. We will, you can also have that opportunity to ask questions directly on the public square. I want to thank all the presenters for speaking today and taking time out of their afternoon. I also want to thank everyone for joining. Um, I think it was really great questions and we're really excited for all the momentum and the discussion around this. If you have any additional questions, again, my email is below. Um, we're happy to talk to you more one-on-one -on -one about this as well. I hope everyone has a great day and we look forward to seeing all your discussions on the public square next week. All right, bye-bye everyone.